Thank you for having this chance to share on skin related problems with you in this class. In fact, in terms of Chinese and Western medicine, there are many aspects that can draw on both Chinese medicine and modern scientific biotechnology. Of course, there are many challenges in collaboration. But over these challenges, we will definitely be able to meet the solution and gradually turn medicine, which is complex, into a method that can benefit both doctors and patients in our daily medicine. Today, I will discuss this topic. First of all, I want to talk more broadly and deeper today, just hoping everyone will gain something. Really, the combination of Chinese medicine and Western medicine does have many advantages. At the time of diagnosis, Chinese medicine or Western medicine can be used as two paths. In the diagram, Western medicine is blue, horizontal and straight, it is a kind of linear analysis, which is easier because use of linearity can analyze messy problems. Using many factors to analyze and finding some credible elements, the use of linearity, through medical records on symptoms, or tests, or biological, physical or other changes, would enable us to analyze the problem all the way, to delineate out shown on the right side, the so-called Western medicine clinical diagnosis. There are a lot of details, of course, that I won't explain in depth here at this time. On the other hand, Chinese medicine uses the holistic view, in fact, there are many holistic views that are good. Chinese medicine starts analysis with the so-called four diagnostic methods, and uses the eight principles of syndrome differentiation, or other dialectical methods, until it reaches the syndrome differentiation that is related to treatment with a set of external causes and internal causes, and a series of diagnoses on defined yin and yang changes, exterior or interior, cold or heat, depletion or repletion states, and, in terms of visceral qi and blood, wei qi ying blood, etc., or as a description of change of body state. I will not go into details here today, there are many very special terms. Rather, I want to talk specifically about the big circle in the middle. In this circle, the lower half of the circle in blue is worked out in Western medicine, which at the start, it began by hoping to find real problems. It is a problem-based workout. When there are problems found, one can tell the facts, and it will come to show various diseases of the body. It asks if you have pain, and it hurts, if it doesn't, it doesn't. But Chinese medicine is not like this. It also asks whether you are sleeping well, and whether your bowel movements are good, that is, the whole body to ask. So in the four diagnostics, in the yellow circle above, Chinese medicine here, over the intangible issues, did a lot of work. In this way, it can be connected to Western medicine. In this way, health analysis can be added together with the pathological aspects in the whole understanding. Perhaps, it may be said that Western medicine does not have much refined aspects with such subtle wisdom. Alright, we've figured it all out so far. How to use it on the skin problems then? What about using the combination of Chinese medicine and Western medicine? First of all, let's start understanding that the body can be said to have three aspects, the body quality, the body details, and the body endowment. In Western medicine, it is good to use anatomy and physiology, histology, embryology, or biochemistry, molecular biology, etc. at the beginning, and use the experimental method to understand the body separately. With epigenetics and so many new technology coming up, there will of course be many new knowledge and methods in the future. What about the holistic nature of Western medicine? It uses the social psychological biological system to generalize, in which of course there are many details. I am a Western medicine and Chinese medicine practitioner myself, so I would as much as I wish talk much more about it. But firstly in the lecture this time, I hope to be simpler, so that the understanding can be used both in Western medicine as well as in Chinese medicine. When it comes to the analysis of the body quality, the body details, and the body endowment, it uses Chinese medicine to understand the so-called qi and blood movement of the meridians, the rise and fall of yin and yang functional elements, and whether the endowment of the body is rightly or loosely organized, working with sufficiency or insufficiency, and well in order or chaotic. Even if the two were different, both Chinese and Western medicine started here. In short, both Chinese medicine and Western medicine have advantages. In Western medicine, the knowledge of three-dimensional human space and the environment is enriched and well-developed in understanding. As for traditional Chinese medicine, it is in the so-called heaven-earth human dimensions to comprehend the overall in-depth understanding. Being so, 
the use of meridians and acupoints points are some of the details. Each of Chinese medicine and Western medicine has its own method of thinking, each has its own method to find the cause, each has its own so-called therapeutic target for an intelligent treatment. Also, there could be ways to stretch and throughput the meridians, remove the so-called blood stasis, and clear blockages in the way of recovering yin-yang balance. Overall, there are many promising approaches with both medicine fronts. But in this generation, it sees the separation of Chinese medicine and Western medicine. In essence, both Chinese medicine and Western medicine are looking at a patient, and at a time when a treatment has not been fully made and cannot be completed, it only means that there is a blind spot somewhere. So how can we go about it? Here is an example. I especially like to ask around looking at this patient's tongue. I like to ask Western doctors, what's wrong with this patient? This is a 16-year-old young man. Western medicine doctors will think about it and then ask, what is the problem with him, if he has asthma, it is asthma problem. But this young man is not asthmatic, he has no other symptoms at all, but his skin is somewhat worse. So Western medicine does not know how to work out well and how to go about analyzing it, one of the blind spots. So, what to do? How about having a body check, liver, kidney, etc. But it's nothing after the check. What to do then? It turns out that Western medicine is not inaccurate. But he does not understand some physical states and cannot express them out. The coarse corrupt tongue denotes some disease, yet he cannot see the problem. What is this in Chinese medicine? He mainly looks at the body of the patient and this time uses the eight principles of cold forward slash heat and deficiency forward slash excess, or other methods to distinguish the contextual map of the body and restore it. The social and psychological influences emphasized by Western medicine are generally reflected in the body. A with the body suffers from stresses and strain. The maladjustment or incompatibility of the body that is not adapted for the environment is seen in this circle, and more reorganization concepts may help. Although Chinese and Western medicine have blind spots, many people think that blind spots cannot be overcome because Western medicine doctors do not understand Chinese medicine. Really, how can Western medicine doctors know all Chinese medicine? And in fact Western medicine doctors will not know all of their own Western medicine. Chinese medicine practitioners would also not think that they will know all Western medicine in the end. In fact, medicine is broad, and it is impossible to know everything. Our set of methods is to enable everyone to use the two it together and to eliminate these blind spots. Well, to put it simply, health methods have a set of ways to see what is wrong with all diseases. The medical model, together with the concept of health, is a universal format, yet it can be reformed. Western medicine has this medical concept. But in fact, Chinese medicine looks at health even more deeply because the so-called health concept they use is different. Western medicine has become strong, thinking that gathering cases in any disease, listing all the similar diseases in the treatment, and give treatment results for understanding, would make him think that he must have known the best all about the disease. However, on the reverse, we now know that there are many diseases that treatment with Chinese medicine can be better than Western medicine. Therefore, the medical model that focuses on seeing a doctor needs to be changed. Therefore when integrative Chinese and Western medicine comes out to be used, it essentially reforms that medical treatment. Herein the treatment of the disease will also become different. Good. First of all, we need to understand the situation and the extent to go for treatment, see if the specific, overall, and local aspects are altered, and over a disease, with a single principle or a multidimensional problem how to treat well and remove the causal influence, even treating till body harmony. By this time, you may have a lack of basic understanding of what is called the body state, not understanding how to go about to treat. Well, I will use this slide to try to do the analysis for types for everyone, for a better reclassification. Let us see what can be looked for in the body. Simply, when one sees a doctor, of course the doctor first looks for a disease. Secondly is to look for problems of the body. What in the body to see here? If you are a Chinese medicine practitioner, you will understand it better. In fact, Western medicine can also understand it, and you can know after talking about it.
So let's understand it together. Now, in terms of lesions, it's easy, it's a local problem. The second is an overall body problem. This division is not absolute, it's the simplest for everyone to understand. What is the local disease problem? For example, the urticaria mentioned this time is local. Then, what is the overall body disease? For example, for the atopic skin, the body itself as a whole is easy to react to any little thing. In this regard, the body part may sometimes react due to a little pressure, and there may be local parts reacting typically. These can be understood one by one in the same way. Okay. After these in the second column, it is about looking at the body. I will use two terms, the first is the body state, representing its foundation condition. The second is the elaborate details, which refers to the fine body details where a lot can be described. On body state, it can be viewed with Chinese medicine as Zhen. Sometimes Western medicine doctors are afraid of this word, and once it appears, it is felt that it may not be fully understood. Simply put, it is the entire conglomerate profile. That is the Zhen of Chinese medicine, the syndromal description. I'll use this interpretation to make it easier for everyone to understand. Furthermore, below the body state and the Zhen are two words the body tendency and the syndromal change. Hope everyone understand a little more. In general, there is a time when the body is not sick, and a time when it is sick. When one is not sick, a body physique or constitution is assessed, but this is not simply a combination of body elements. Here is a tendency, with a body bias, which may be a bias toward heat, toward cold, toward dryness, and toward others' tendencies. This body bias is called tendency, a manifestation of the gen. With this bias further changed after getting sick, Chinese medicine describes the so-called syndromal diagnosis of the disease, which is the syndromal change, used like a technical term. Understand clearly that Chinese medicine talks much about physical evidence, until it sees the body as a whole piece, when the combined pattern of tendencies can be seen, the whole body bias and which way it goes is inclined. When one is ill, virtually it can show whether it is depleted or replete its changes in qi and blood, and meridians. Then you can understand whether the body is cold, hot and dry or wet, whether it is a skin syndrome or a physical syndrome. No matter one is sick or not sick, you can talk about it. When it comes to looking for lab out details of the body, what happens? Look at how they are poised. The poise means that the person has the momentum to have a pattern set up inside out. He has been structuring it since childhood. Some people are rigid, not flexible, others are not. Standing and sitting postures will also affect this pattern of poise, mind and body cultivation also. More or less, what a person has learned before and what he generates all matter in this adaptive poise. Meeting a certain environment, how one uses this patterned momentum to deal with the environment, this develops further up. This aspect a doctor also looks at. Look further, continue to read the features set up his fine details, how it's composed and combined. These are all in the strengths of Western medicine, but Chinese medicine has it. For example, the intermediary layer and the layering of the fascia can be described including the fascia gap, interval, or fascia adhesion, derangements. The word fascia is quite generalized. It consists of a series of continuums between the fascia and membranes between the muscles in our body and the whole body is connected to each other by a fascia, wrapping around it, including the so-called connective tissues. Then, when it is disturbed, when the order is deranged, there are cumulated and aggregate problems. As it can be described together, so, whether it is Chinese medicine or Western medicine, there is something to be said about it. Therefore, regardless of Chinese and Western medicine, we can say what a disease is, whether it is local disease or whole body disease, or problems in the body itself. In order to simplify memorization, let's try to look at the lowest part of the slide. First, the lesion, is like an injury, the part is injured. Second the overall disease, such as toxic, polluted, and the overall body is diseased. Third, rect profile is a fundamental decline. Fourth, if corrupt, look for physical derangements and what cumulated and aggregated. Then a doctor looking at the lowest four words, it is easy to remember which aspect is significant when looking at the person. So as a doctor, we see a person, let's see the whole thing. The skin is even more special, 
because the skin is actually the reactive performance out of the whole body. Not just the skin. Many times, our skin and the outside world, living together, are to react and fight, and each part of this interaction is related to each other. Therefore, whether it is good or not, doctors have to look for it. If the body itself has an impact, we need to see it. Ordinary modern Chinese medicine and Western medicine, succinctly opt to differentiate diseases and Chinese medicine syndromes. This is just simplifying syndromes and diseases. You must understand that as I said earlier, Gen are all tendency patterns, before one is diseased, and after the disease. In fact, it is all in the method of Gen on syndromal differentiation. When one becomes ill, the method will be more complicated, because the elaborate details of the body will be changed, or it will be wrecked, or it will be deranged. As soon as we start clearly, noting injury, poison, wrecked, deranged, many clinical features will be easy to understand, and the way and pattern of disease development will be easy to understand. In fact, there are a lot of non-gray analyses in the middle, which are only due to doctors haven't thoroughly understood the issues. Therefore, when doctors forget to look at these, it may not be good medical expertise. To put it simply, when it comes to diagnosing diseases, it depends on the body changes, including the body state and its elaborate details. There may be many faulty changes or dysfunctions. Changed this way to that way. In simple terms, Western medicine see faults as a local lesion. In fact, traditional Chinese medicine also talks about locality of faults, which would be regarded as a disease, or a syndromal malady, or a site of affliction. Western medicine with its particular strength in this aspect, is meticulous on more details in infection, outer environment, nutrition, genetics, immunity, molecular biology, or the mechanism of disease. Why is Western medicine so detailed? Historically, Western medicine has developed a lot of good knowledge and details. This meticulous view includes the disorders of the physiological system, the organ system, and so on. So the lesions are realistic. I once published an overview article. This overview talked about our body layer by layer, as it can be seen by traditional Chinese medicine or Western medicine. It will be useful. Simply, the body has a superficial layer. It is not as simple as the skin. There is the skin, the inner dermis, and the fascia, which are his entire border tone. The border tone will help a person stabilize himself, or to act, or to react, or to shape his body. The inner third layer, is what we often describe for organ systems. System, organs are the most often detailedly described. In fact, there are things Chinese medicine sees, and there are things Western medicine sees. If you are interested, go to the reference in the lower right corner. Now, the middle layer are vessels, blood vessels, nerves and fascia. This layer helps the inner layer and the border tone layer to react with each other. Here are many details, some are too general, and often can't be described. In fact, the layer is loosely structured, which means that many structures seems not be understood. You think you do not understand, but at certain discussion frame, its special features make sense. To sum up, there are the outer border tone, the inner layer, the middle chi layer, and the deep aspects. We must really look into so many things in order to see the body details unlike using Western medicine, just to see a few things. Now in the second round, to look at body quality change. Change of body quality is not the change of body details we just mentioned. It is his physique, any substantial changes, noting this is also found in Western medicine. But in Chinese medicine, it is looking for pathogenesis and disease at simplification. Of course, it includes the locality of the disease, which is not just a point. The disease locality is the position defined by Chinese medicine, where the qualitative change is. Lastly, to look at the integrality change. The integrality change affects the energy of his body, and it may be at a loss. First of all, it includes understanding his meridian qi and blood, whether it is sparse and fallen, or whether it is dense or depleted. Good, or bad, you can tell with just one question. But it seems that it is not enough to know just that. The etiology, disease nature, locality of disease, stage of disease, syndromal disease, the etiology and locality of the disease, inferior or superior body integrality, ascending and descending density, 
as well as good syndromal differentiation, disease differentiation and body estimation, would allow one to see where the body is wrong and wrecked, change of willpower, or body quality change, substantial change, or to see if there is any abnormality, imbalances excess or deficit in his whole. Virtually, first is to use the lesion to see the disease changes, and second is to use his disease pattern to see the lesional changes. It might seem complicated, but it's actually not that hard to get used to. This is so when we look at the magnitude of specific or local parts for the whole situation. It seems that we look at the operating border tone of the entire human body is looking at the skin, but it is not completely the skin, because the balance adjustment goes from inside out. As part of the whole, the outermost border tone, inner and middle layers all need to be understood more. To put it simply, inside the body where I labeled red, layer by layer, up to the surface, becomes infinite three-dimensional all the way. So a lot of details are derived. Whether it is in terms of physique, body details, body integrality, or the whole, there are many points that can be noted. Just recall that the fascia layer is the dense connective tissue in the dermal articular layer and papillary layer of his entire body. It has loose tissue and dense tissue. Notably the special feature is that it is elastic, and fills the whole body, and runs through all the reticular layers in the tissues. So our tendons, or the membranes of the muscles, or the membrane on the bones, or in many places below the skin. In general, this fascia structure is often changing, remodeling. Why? Because when the body reaction is different, the body is reacting differently to the outside world, and its organization becomes different. Sometimes it moves and changes its position. It may also be pulled by the influence of gravity, or pulled by one's own behavior, such as playing and sports. In short, the body would be excellent if all smoothly run up and down and the layers are neat. But often we don't. Second, the skin and border tone of the body is related to the whole outside world, with a collective response. The cortical collective response because it is in contact with the outside world and the body environment, manifests feelings, and transmits a lot of cues and information. Knowing the needs of the body, it plays an important role in regulating the outer and inner, temperature and humidity, and how to monitor immune stimulants and substrates, allergic reactions, etc. The outer layer of the body and the outside world, the overall sense of touch, are very close to each other. In Chinese medicine, the whole body, including the border tone, collectively in the twelve meridians, are related to the seasons, the sun, the moon, the times, or the laws of nature, qi and blood. Everyone probably has heard of it. All in all, the best is that the body tissue and fascia are well connected and organized, the bones well placed, and the skin well spread. When the muscles move well, the whole person will fold and work well. And then the body will be fine and effective. Today's talk is on the relationship between the body and the skin. The skin is easily wrinkled and deformed without knowing itself. Therefore, doing medical treatment, it includes the entire muscle fascia, skin, and body, so much that it was fine up and down, and the circulation and perfusion are well coupled. Today, hoping everyone has a basic understanding of how to see a skin patient more effectively.